Okay. Oh, right. So back from the little break. Um, okay. So we're making some good progress on getting this uh, uh, this thing to a bit more programmatic and give us a bit more flexibility. Now, looking at this data, okay, there's obviously a lot of things like the master IP, uh, the domain. And for most things, the salt options, which are standard. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to turn this uh, into oops, uh, I'm going to turn this into um, Yeah, uh, into a list of servers, and we will only have the exceptions in here. Okay, uh, so this will become uh, a list of servers. Okay, uh, and and will become just. Oops. Uh, uh, just one of many. Uh, and this is a JSON file. Okay, so we've got uh, a bunch of servers. And uh, above that, uh, we will have, uh, let's call them, uh, let's call them server defaults. Now, not everything will be defaultable. Uh, the reason for calling it server defaults is, rather than anything else is, I mean, we could say servers then have defaults and then some sort of other thing for the list of servers, but yeah, it, it, it's fine as it is. Uh, and what we do is uh, we will take these three things here. Uh, and put them into the server defaults. Uh, so those will be the default values. Uh, and everything else. Uh, actually, just to be complete, we might as well turn that into a default. Um, Uh, and the default will be false. <clears throat> uh. So now, can I in Ruby, is there an easy way? Merge object. Uh, 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 merging the hash perhaps. Uh, 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 merge hash. Hmm. So we've got a. Uh, let me see. There is actually a merge function. Nice. Is that something which is in Ruby? If it is, that's exactly what we want. Because now we can do. Uh, now, if I sit, uh, ah, now we can get caught out here. Uh, because H1 merge H2 presumably changes H1. Uh, oh no, it returns a new hash containing the contents of other hash and the contents of hash. Nice. 
uh, if the, va the value of entries with duplicate keys will be that of other hash. So it'll be the one. Okay, so that. Okay, so that means that we're going to override. Okay, so that would be good. So it'll be default dot merge whatever. Uh, otherwise, the value of each duplicate key is determined by calling the block with the key. Um, uh, okay, so. If I did H1 merge H2. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's pretty much exactly what we want, isn't it? So now we can do. Uh, we can get rid of. Oops. Uh, we can get rid of. Oh, come on. Uh, we can get rid of this business and instead uh, we get we get the right so we need to be a bit more refined now don't we uh, so let's say uh, call that the config file uh, and call that config and we'll call the defaults uh, is equal to config default the same but now uh, we want to replace nconf uh, we don't want that to be nconf nconf will now be will now be uh, server conf server conf dot merge be defaults dot merge server conf and that is server conf Change that to uh, conf primary. Uh, and if that works, uh, let's validate that first. Let's try that. Well, looks promising. And this will allow us to do one other thing.
because uh, we'll be able to replace the script. Mm, do we want to? Because there's two different ways of, we're, we're running the scripts. Uh, in the first way, because we've got that we've got that weird exception. Uh, now while uh, <clears throat> if if the script will run in the background when it's invoked. Uh, which I think we established it wouldn't, even if we try to trick it. So what we need to do is uh, now I, th I think we'll leave it as it is. What I was thinking is uh, we could we could add the script in. And have the, the bootstrap script as a default script, and then the main script would be supplemental script. But it, it, it's not worth it. Uh, it would be if we were going to have a complex series of scripts running, but we're not. We're just going to have those two. Uh, what we are going to have to do, of course, is sort out the flags for running the various orchestration we want to do. Uh, which little dogs are being a pain in again. Eh? You're being a pain again, Kenny. Right, so what we want to do, uh, let's just take all that for a second. Uh, let's look at the orchestration. Um, so. <clears throat> Right, so the orchestration runner is what we're going to use, uh, and you can see here that uh, okay, not having explained states, I suppose this won't make much sense. But um, Uh, do, 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 Yeah, uh, so we can use this to uh, do the orchestration once we know that a certain list of... So what we can do is we can have an orchestration state uh, defined and then map that to a list of servers when all those servers are available we can run that orchestration state uh, so then the main function just has to loop around uh, seeing which keys are available and accepting them 
once a key's been accepted uh, it gets added to the list of accepted and then when that list matches some element we run the corresponding orchestration now that we can do that we can actually do all of that in bash with a little bit of caution uh, but it's probably going to be easier to use a better language like python uh, Uh, I mean the same principles can be used and that is that whenever a key is accepted we just add that to a comma separated list of sorted keys uh, of sorted server host names uh, and then that becomes a key into a hash uh, where the key is a comma separated list of host names and the value is or can be an array of but it can be a single orchestration target state yeah you can do it all with one orchestration state um, so that actually is not bad so it it's only a question of the sort so we can do it in bash it's just a bit of a dog's breakfast um, uh, actually no you can't do it that way uh, because the you can't reliably predict when each minion will validly connect i mean you can make it pretty much certain but you can't predict 100 when each it's possible for example for one and three to appear uh, and then two which would mean you'd end up with a list one two three uh, the problem then is if you had a 1-2 mapping to an orchestration state it would never get triggered because you'd never be in a situation where you had 1 and 2. Uh, so from that point of view that's a really stupid approach. Because what you end up having to do then is loop through to look for 1, 1-2, one, 1-2-3 one, keys. Okay, so if you're doing it in Python, how then would you go about doing it? You, if you had the same setup, then uh, the mapping would not be comma separated key. It would just be uh, when certain criteria were satisfied. Uh, and uh, a simple state would do that. It was, it was a simple state diagram. So that would work. Yeah, so you'd have one points to two, two points to three. Okay, so when one and three became available, if you tried to walk that chain, Two wouldn't be present, so it would go. Nope, I'm not available yet. Uh, but as soon as two became available, you'd walk from one to two. That would trigger you the first orchestration state. Then you'd walk to three, and that would trigger the one, two, three orchestration state. Now the advantage of that is if you've got one, two, and three, you could also have one, two, and four. Because uh, once you reach two, you've then got a branch point three and four. If three satisfied, you would run three. If four was satisfied, you'd run four. If both were satisfied, you'd run three, then you'd run four. Because they should be independent of one another. Mm, okay, so 
Now that should con connect to server one. Uh, and boom, there it is. So, uh, salt key minus L. Too good. So everything seems to have worked. Alright, uh, here's salt test dot ping. No, well, everything seems to have worked. So the do the default domain seems to have been picked up. Uh, the master IP address seems to have been picked up because if it hadn't been, uh, this second server would never have connected. Uh, the primary seems to have been picked up. The salt options, I assume, have been picked up. Uh, we can test that by uh, logging into server 2. <laughs> Uh, brain getting ahead of fingers. Uh, right, so uh, if we do system CTL status salt master, we should find it says no such service basically. Oh, look at that! Excellent. Uh, whereas the minion is working just fine. Good. So that means that the flag has worked. I mean, the other thing we could do, of course, is check out Salt Cloud. Uh, but no, there's no point. Um, right. Uh, the other thing we can check out over here is yes, it's connected. Uh, uh, we should have the salt entry. Yes. Uh, and there's our host name. And uh, for the qualified domain name, we're good to go. Right, good. Okay, so that seems to all have worked out fine. Uh, right, so we've now got uh, a somewhat data-driven system uh, uh, we can even now uh, we can change the memory for the more can we so that we can actually put in here let's put it up here uh, so we can have memory set to uh, 4096, let's say. So we get 4 gig per system. And CPUs set to 2. Uh, so everything gets 2 CPUs by default. Boom. Very nice boy. Uh, although in actual it, CPUs is, it, I think, is really cause. Uh, so we should have four. This virtual box CPUs. Uh, actually. The best place to look for a lot of this setting stuff is um, in the VBOX uh, documentation, which is the, what this is. Um, uh, so, where are we? CPUs, uh, system settings, processor tab. Uh, oh, this is for the interface. However, it should tell us so processors and number of virtual CPU cores. Yeah. Okay, so what we're saying here is we've got two core system. Uh, I think both of the machines I'm going to put this on 
are actually four core systems, and both of them have got eight gear of RAM as well. But we won't, uh, we won't push it too far. Uh, of course, it also depends on uh, how many cores you've got to play with uh, with your test system. Uh, it it won't matter. Um, Uh, yeah, so you can see here, uh, you can actually set more more CPU cores than you've got physically. Uh, so we get CPU cores is fine. What does it do about memory? Uh, display setting, storage settings. Uh, uh, does the motherboard include RAM? I can't remember. No, base memory. Set the amount of RAM that's allocated and given to the VM when it's running. Uh, requested from the host OS. Right, so that needs to be available. Uh, uh, attempt to start the VM. Not available enough. The VM is running. Uh, uh, this is the same setting that was specified in the VirtualBox wizard. Generally, it is possible to change the memory size after installing it, but you must not reduce the memory to the amount where the OS would no longer boot. We'll leave that at 4 gig. Uh, we've got two machines running at 4 gig, uh, which is uh, greedy. <laughs> Uh, um, may cause smaller machines to start paging, but uh, I've got a system here with 64 gig of RAM, so it shouldn't be a problem for testing purposes. Uh, on this system, good, right, okay. Um, right, so. What's the state of play? The state of play is um, if I go to whoops, uh, if I go to here and do a tree. Okay, so we've got uh, the vagrant file, which is this fella down here. All right, uh, we've got uh, the provi the provisioners now. Uh, except minions, if you remember, is the one that we, we're now going to replace, at least in part, with main. We may use except minions. Servers.json is going to be the thing that defines our servers, uh, and that is this configuration file over here, uh, which is going to do most of the configuration work in terms of the basic setups. Uh, we've got this bootstrap script, which all it's doing really is installing salt. As I said before, there is another way of doing this, but this is the way we're going to do it on this system. And at the moment, we've got nothing special about the minions. In fact, we might remove that directory. It's only there really for, the complete, for completeness. Uh, and we'll go when we put it into Git, because of course Git doesn't control empty directory. So unless we put something in there, uh, and I can't think of anything special which is going to go in there because we're going to configure all the minions by using salt actually on the master. So let's remove that to make things neater. Okay. Uh, oh, idiot. Uh, right. So. Uh, so now, uh, oh, we can remove that test file as well because we don't need that anymore. Uh, so now we've got a fairly clean tree. So what's uh, and we've got a, a pretty much a functional uh, system. So uh, if we get add everything. Uh, 
Now, we don't want to add the accept minions just yet. Uh, so we want to uh, restore, uh, restore the staged uh, for provision masters accept minions. Uh, right. So that's everything we want under control because that is all the stuff that can uh, mm. oh yeah because we, we yeah it, it shows up as deleted but we've actually moved that to there uh, right so let's uh, do a git commit uh, and uh, put something sensible in here this time so we are so this is um, uh, what, 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 what have we actually done? So we have uh, separated main VM config into JSON data and storm only salt. At this stage, uh, uh, and you can see it's hopefully telling us that we've gone over the uh, I think it's 64 characters. Uh, however, we can put uh, more details in here. So, uh, move most of the base VM configuration into the uh, data file and uh, um, uh, come on Mark install uh, um, and reduce server uh, bootstrap to minimal salt uh, install Placeholder main provisioner. Um, placeholder. Oh, fingers, you letting me down today? Yeah. 
Dev branch, so we can push that. Uh, uh, oh, um, uh, get remote, uh, and it is for sorting of vagrant classes. So, assuming the agent is running uh, uh, let's get lab something dot classes and then oh. bingo what's his name Right. And on that note, I think we'll call it a day. What do you reckon?